Okay, so before we go into like Pixelogic ZBrush and start using some of that, let's start. Let's cover what's in Blender right now. Uh, then we'll go on to workflows. So what I'm going to do is start out with a new scene. Uh, generally, from here, what you need to do is keep it simple. When you're, especially when you're learning textures and when you're learning materials with any new program, keep it simple. Well, you remember that saying, "Kiss, keep it, keep it simple, stupid." That's exactly what you have to do to get this stuff down, because Blender is a little unforgiving when it comes down to if you if you don't have your workflow down pat, it's a really frustrating thing to find out what's going wrong with your texture. And I'll show you how an easy way to to figure that out. All right, so first off, let's go into Subserve and subsurf this up and let's give it to about four levels and then hit apply okay now let's go into edit mode click on alt this will automatically highlight an edge loop if you right click okay control E on the keyboard will mark that seam and let's split our views up to something a little bit easier to understand let's split our area by right clicking up on the top, splitting it here. Okay, and we'll use UV Image Editor for that one. Let's do that one more time on this side. And for this one, I want to choose Outliner. Outliner is amazing. Love this thing. Okay, so here, what I'm going to do is start labeling this conventionally first. So I have cube highlighted right here, right? So I'm going to change cube to ball. Ball 1. And the OBJ, I'm going to change that to ball 1, 2. Just like that. So this is a material attribute. This is the object attribute to it. Okay, now for everything, keep it very well labeled. All right, so while this is highlighted, if you accidentally unclicked it, just highlight one part and hit L on the keyboard. That will highlight everything. Hit U on the keyboard to go into unwrap. And over here, make sure you squish this down to fit. So S on the keyboard, scale it down. G to grab it. And let's move this shell out of the way too. G to grab it. Okay, so quickly you can grab these by clicking on one of the UVs hitting L, hitting G, moving it, just like that. All right, now that we have that done, what we're going to do is go in here and assign it a new um, material. So let's go over to the Material tab. And I'm going to use this default material right now. The default material is Material. I don't like that name, so I'm going to call this Ball 1 also. Okay, and I'm going to choose to use nodes for this. Okay, so using nodes. Now if I did that right, I should be able to click this and I have a little N by the ball. Alright, so now we need to go over to this one right here. Ah, node editor, there we go. And go ahead and click this around. By clicking on the top left hand side, you can move these around. Okay, so this material tree or node tree is going to represent ball. So right here it says add new. Well, we already have one in here, ball one. Okay, now if you hit spacebar, we can add an input of texture to this tree. And by default, it automatically attaches itself. Just click on it and drag, and you can actually disconnect that. So in order to complete any one material, you need several things. You need a vector, so we're going to add a vector to it. That's add input geometry. The vector tells where the texture is going to go on the actual object. The texture finds the texture on your hard drive and then transmutes it to the ball, and this is your out. Notice the out has a red button lit on the top of it. That's very important. Only one out can always have the red button attached like that. So here, 
see by default you have one texture to play with. I'll show you how to import more textures here in the next video. But for right now, let's go to texture. And then go over here and attach UV to vector. This tells it to use the UVs on the ball that we just made to map the texture onto it. And now the color gets connected to this color right here. To complete this scientific madness, we're going to go into UV Image Editor. And what I need to do is make a texture on my hard drive. Okay, Easily done by going into Image, New. I'm going to choose, uh, I'm just going to go 1024 by 1024 on this one. And if you want an alpha, you can have 32-bit float. But for right now, I'm just going to go 1024, 1024, and hit OK. It's all black. And then go Image, Save As. Save this somewhere onto my desktop. I have a nice little tutorial or little place for these. And we'll call this maybe Video 1. I'll just put it on the desktop. Okay, now we have a file. Now, if you already had a file, you wouldn't have to do that, but I needed to make one. So how do we get the file into the program? It's actually here, but how do we get it physically into the program? Well, that's done by going into, back to Nodes Editor, clicking on the texture itself, and clicking on this, Texture Buttons. Because right here, it's not physically showing up. We need to do an image. It needs to be loaded from the hard drive. And on the hard drive, it's called Video 1, TGA. So there we go. We have our madness all laid out. That's all the steps you need to do to put a material on a texture and have it show both up real time and render time because now I can I should be able to go to render render current frame and I should have a black sphere I should also be able to go into object mode and I should be able to paint on the ball okay so what I can do here is go into texture paint click on this one and here's my brush it's got white paint at an opacity of 0 0.2 and I, I'll label this one ball one. Here's the size of it. There we go. And that should pick it up. Let's see if I go into a view and go into a camera view. Let's paint something in camera view that I can see. should be able to render this now. Notice it did not show up. Good. Okay. Now, let me show you why that did not show up. Okay, in here, it helps every once in a while to refresh this little button. Okay? Another thing is, I don't see it on the sphere. That's a common problem when you're using nodes because you had to get the texture in to begin with. So if I click on ball 1, and go into the material, I can now get rid of the material here by clearing it out. Notice it now pops up. If you have a successful tree, you should be able to see all the spheres have the texture mapped out correctly in the real-time preview. If you do not see that, make sure you go back and clear your texture out. Now, when you render, voila, ball one. The last thing I want to show you before we go on to the next video is when you click on an object, make sure you go like a ball would be what? It would have soft edges. So in here, I want to set it smooth. That way when I render it, it doesn't have that tessellation factor. Now, what happens if I need to put another texture in my world in another sphere with a different texture? That's going to be the next video.